Penny stocks are entering a once in a decade opportunity, but you still have to know how to find the best investments. In this video, I'll reveal why every investor needs to start looking at these cheap stocks and how I find the stocks with two and, and three X potential. Then I'll reveal three penny stocks to buy that could double within the next year. We're talking penny stock investing today on Let's Talk Money. Be dead. Make money. Make your money work Creating for you. Creating the financial future you deserve. Let's Talk Money. Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue with the Let's Talk Money channel here on YouTube. I want to send a special shout out to everyone there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Nation, there is no doubt that penny stocks can make you a lot of money. Two picks from our penny stock list last month are surging already as shares of education services platform Zovio have jumped 34% and Quantum Corporation recommended at $3.35 a share is now up over 43%. And while this is usually the part of every penny stocks video where you hear a big butt like penny stocks are extremely risky and, and not guaranteed, right now is actually one of the best times to start investing in these cheap stocks. The reason is because as that uncertainty around the economy builds up and the smaller companies get squeezed, penny stocks just get destroyed. The iShares Microcap ETF, ticker IWC, a penny stocks fund shown in blue here, got slammed 43% to mid-March and is still underperforming the S&P 500 index of large companies. So not only are these small cap stocks trading at blood in the streets valuations here, if you do your homework and use what I'm gonna show you next to find those strong companies, these stocks will rebound in a big way. Any small company that has the financial strength to survive over these next six months will have a clear runway to ride economic growth for years. I want to start out by showing you how to find the best penny stocks, give you the process to follow to find which stocks have that rebound potential. Then I'll reveal three penny stocks I'm buying for my own portfolio and why. I'll be putting these stocks first in my paper portfolio in the Weeble app and then into my real portfolio on the platform. I love this stock simulator here. Uh, Weeble gives you a million dollars to test out your strategies and your stocks in this paper simulator portfolio. I can add the stocks to my portfolio, get all the charting and the news that I need to follow the investment and, and track it until I know I want to invest. It's a great feature and will help you make sure that you're only investing in those best stocks. Now, I'll leave a link to the Weeble app in the video description below. Uh, click through and not only are you going to get access to that stock simulator, but Weeble is going to give you two free shares of stock worth up to $1,400 when you sign up and make a deposit. Now Nation, just because we're coming into a great time to invest in penny stocks, it doesn't mean you can just throw your money at anything. There will still be companies that are going to fail and others that will produce never produce a return. So what I want to do is I want to walk you through my criteria for picking the best penny stocks, uh, companies I know will survive this economy and will do well in a rebound. So I'll usually start by screening for companies under a billion dollars market cap because that's really what we're talking about with these penny stocks. Now I might go as high as $2 billion for market cap if I find something I really like, but generally I want to keep it to those smaller companies with that flexibility to move faster than their larger competitors. And I know companies worth hundreds of millions of dollars may not sound like a penny stock, but when you've got companies just coming to market uh, issuing shares at a billion dollar valuation, then a few hundred million is still very small. Then I'll take this list of companies and I'll narrow it down to the ones with a competitive advantage or an outlook. And that might seem a little vague, but this is the kind of quality qualitative analysis that's so super important in penny stocks. You have got to find those companies that can apply a real advantage to their flexibility and that speed to take a quick market share. Now that's going to lead to booming sales at first and then either a bump in the share price or an outright buyout from a bigger company. Next I'll look at the income statement and what I want to see here is growth in sales and optimally slower growth in operating expenses as well. Now if I can find a fast growing company that maybe is seeing higher expenses but those aren't growing as fast as those sales then that company is not only booking more revenue, but also becoming more profitable as well. And finally here, before we get to those three stock picks, I'll wrap up my search looking at the balance sheet and that survivability that we've been talking about on the channel. So here I'm looking for enough cash on hand that the company can make those interest payments and the expenses if sales weaken during, I don't know, a pandemic. I'm also looking for companies with low long-term debt or at least an improving debt picture. That idea of survivability is so important right now and any company with the balance sheet strength to make it through the next six months or so is really set up to move higher. So going through my checklist, I found three penny stocks to buy, three that I'm really excited about and I wanted to share. First is Entesis Therapeutic Holdings, ticker ETTX, and at a market cap of just $80 million, this is one of the smallest penny stocks I've ever bought. Entesis is a biopharmaceutical focused on development of antibacterial products to treat infections caused by multi-drug resistant bacteria. 
I know it's a mouthful, but basically this is when someone is on a lot of medications, they can get exposed to all kinds of bacteria that isn't easy to shake. So these drugs indices is developing are gonna be extremely important. Now management recently confirmed expectations for phase three results on its bloodstream infections treatment for early 2021. And that's important because a lot of biotech companies have had to pause their clinical trials because of the COVID. In fact, management did have to pause its other phase three testing for zoliflidin, but still expects data in the second half of next year. And it's progressing with phase one trials for another product. So with biotech stocks, it's much less about the economy and much more about their funding runway and those results on the clinical trials. Now, Intesis did recently sign an agreement with Innoviva that will provide funding through the first half of next year, and the company has $26 million in net cash on its balance sheet. So that's about a third of this stock's valuation is just in cash, and the results from that phase three trials is within the next year. Could really take this one higher. Analysts have price targets on Intesis ranging from $5 to $8 a share over the next year, and a successful phase three trial could take this thing to six or $7 a share easily for a 130% return from here. Next here is $1.6 billion Comscope Holdings, ticker COMM. And the company is quite a bit larger than I usually like to look at for penny stocks, but I think this has some real undiscovered opportunity here. Comscope makes copper cabling connectors and fiber optic cabling for the telecom companies and could see a wave of revenue as carriers build out their 5G networks. Now, the pandemic has delayed a lot of those capital expenditure plans, uh, those capital spendings from the telecoms, but they're going to be under the gun on that infrastructure and the network improvements through the rest of this year and next. That could mean a big boost to sales for Comscope, and I don't think it's really priced into the stock yet. Case in point here, and something that really struck me is the returns to cell tower stocks have done really well over the past year. That's American Tower and SBA Communications with a 17 and a 22% return but the enthusiasm hasn't been seen in these other parts of the telecom market. Comscope has struggled and is sitting on a 46% loss over that period. Now, T-Mobile has outlined its network upgrade plans after the Sprint merger, and AT&T said it expects to have 5G coverage by the end of this year. All the carriers are gonna be upgrading for infrastructure, and I think a lot of that money is going to Comscope. Earnings were $1.79 over the last year, giving the shares a rock bottom PE ratio of just 4.6 times earnings. Profits are expected lower over the next year, but the company has a track record of beating expectations, and I think a surprise sales could drive it higher. Analyst targets range from 10 to $17 per share over the next year, and I'm looking for about a $15 per share target, which would be 78% above the current price. Elevate Credit, ticker ELVT is another extremely small company at just $70 million market cap and shares priced under $2 each. Now, Elevate is an online lender to non-prime borrowers in the U.S. and the United Kingdom, which this entire industry has really been hit hard over the past few months. Investors have been worried that lower credit score borrowers would be defaulting, leaving those fintech companies unprofitable. So with everyone trapped at home and fears of prolonged recession, shares are down 70% from that 52-week high, but all that uncertainty is now baked into the stock. Against this pessimism, management is cutting expenses and repurchasing shares. A loan growth will be weak this year, but is expected to rebound in the fourth quarter and early 2021, and this one is that one of those rare penny stocks that's actually already profitable. The business turned profitable in 2017 and booked triple-digit income growth in the last two years. We don't have much to go on from analysts here, but I think the shares could rebound to $4 each over the next year on that rebound in loan demand. Click on the video to the right for the three dividend stocks I'm buying right now for our 2020 stock portfolio. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.